Hello, boys and girls. So today we are going to be learning about the distributive property, and we are going to use arrays to help us with this property. So let's go ahead and get started. So in order to use the distributive property using an array, you have to know what an array is. So these are two examples of arrays on the screen. Because we are so close to Halloween, I thought it would be really cool to use some pumpkins to, sh to show you, excuse me, your first array. So if you look here, this is an array. And if I was going to label this array, how many rows are in this array? And remember, I showed you a video before where these are rows. Rows go left to right. Rows look like this. So how many rows are in this array? You should have said three. There are three rows in this array. Very good. How many? columns are in this array. Remember, columns go up and down. You should have said three. So if I was going to label this array, I would say it is three times three equals, don't say six. If you said six, it is because you added three plus three. We are multiplying three times three, three, six, nine is the answer. Very good. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to, in your brain, label the colorful circle array and come up with the multiplication equation that matches it. Go ahead. You have about 15 seconds left. Okay, so if I was labeling this array, I'm first gonna start with the rows. Remember rows go left to right. I see one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna label this with a five and your columns go up and down. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna label this with a four and I really um, am comfortable multiplying with five because remember we have learned that you can count by fives when multiplying with five. So I'm gonna choose to use the fives to find this out. So my equation would be five times four because we always start with our groups, which represent our rows, five, 10, 15, 20. So my answer is 20. So we're gonna continue using this idea as we move through the slides. So let's get started. Okay, let me clear off what I had, I'm so sorry. There we go. Okay, so we are gonna be learning a word today. What does it mean to distribute? That's a big math word, distribute. Distribute means to divide or give a share or part of something. Mrs. Raleigh had 21 pumpkins in this array, and there's her array right here. She, was, she wants to share or distribute them by placing one line in the array. How could she distribute? Hmm, how could she distribute those pumpkins? So let's think about that. She has 21 pumpkins there. She wants to share them just by placing a line in the array. How could she distribute the pumpkins? How could she do that? Where could she put that line? I'm gonna give you some time to think about that as we move into our next slide. So some of you may have said, before we do that, I'm sorry, some of you may have said, well, she could put a line here. That is very, very true. Some of you said, could have said she, put, she could put a line here. So boys and girls, as you can see, there are several different ways that you could distribute this array. So we're gonna take this concept further as we move on to our next slide. Okay, what is the distributive property? It is a property in which you can break apart numbers to use your friendly numbers to make equations easier to solve. For example, it is basically breaking apart a larger number into smaller numbers. Let me give you an example here. Let's say that your teacher gave you this multiplication equation. Oh my goodness. If you did not have your facts memorized and you got that equation, it might be very scary because you're like, I have to either draw 
I have to draw 12 groups and put nine in each, or I have to skip count by nine or skip count by 12. That is very difficult to do even for an adult. So this property we're learning about is going to teach you how to break apart this number or this number. And we're gonna get into that further. I just kind of wanted to show you what it's going to, what essentially your, your goal is to get to. So let's begin. Okay, for example, here is Mrs. Raleigh's array again. There's all her pumpkins. And the first thing we're going to do, what good mathematicians do, are we are going to go ahead and label this array. So remember, you start with your rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're gonna put your seven there. How many columns? One, two, three. We're gonna put our three there. And up here, this is how we're gonna organize our information. So we know this is a seven times three array, okay? Just like the video or just like the, sh the screen I showed you, we now want to distribute these pumpkins. We wanna break them apart. So I think I wanna break them apart here. So I broke apart the rows. I did nothing with the columns. So what that means is my columns are staying the same. My columns are staying the same. So I will now create two multiplication equations where my columns stay the same. Three, 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 there it is. But what I did do is I broke apart my rows. I no longer have a seven times three array. I now have, and I'm going to use a different color, a four, one, two, three, four, and a three. But four plus three is seven. So all I did was broke up that seven into a four and a three. So if I come down here, I have a four by three and a three by three. The only thing I did was broke apart my rows. Easy peasy, and let's check to make sure this works. Seven times three is 21. Four times three is 12. Three times three is nine. If I add 12 and nine together, I get 21. So I did a great job. Let's continue. And I'm sure you guys right now, your mind is probably blown. Like Mrs. Bushy, this is so cool, but we're gonna keep on trucking. I want you to keep staying focused. Here we go. So we're gonna do another one together using that same organizer. So here I have a array of stars. The first thing I'm going to do is label my array. Obviously I have two rows. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. So I'm gonna come over here and write up top two times eight. And now I'm gonna break apart or distribute my array. I'm gonna put a line here. So if you noticed, I did nothing with my rows. I did nothing with my rows. So my two, two that represents my two rows does not change. However, I broke apart my columns. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to use a different color like I showed you before. I have six columns here and two columns here. So now I have a two times six and a two times two. And I'm gonna see if it works. Two times eight is 16. Two times six is 12. Two times two is four. If I add those numbers together, I do indeed get 16. So I did it correctly. Great job, boys and girls. Let's keep on moving. Okay, and there was there is another example now where I am not, I did not break it apart. I broke it apart the same way as before. I want to see if you remember what to do. So I need you to get out a piece of paper and a pencil. I would like you to use the star array to fill in just the boxes. Boys and girls, do not worry about that long equation at the bottom. That can be very, very scary. All I want you to do is to make some boxes like I have here and fill in. Remember, the, the big equation goes up top, 
and how you broke it apart goes at the bottom. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to fill in these rectangles. Go ahead, please. You are down to 20 seconds. Okay, boys and girls, so up top here in your rectangle, you should have labeled it as a two times eight array that represents the two times eight array, the big array. But then I drew that line here. I distributed my array. Now I have two times six. That represents that part of the columns. And then over here is a two. You should have had two times two. So that is what your graphic organizer should have looked like. So now we're gonna come down here and show you how to represent that graphic organizer into a beautiful third grade equation. So the first equation is where you put the big array before we broke it apart. So before we distributed it or broke it apart, like we know, it was it represented two times eight. But then we did we broke it up into two smaller arrays as shown here. Look how easy this is, guys. All you're doing is copying it back down into the equation. Look at that. It looks scary, but I promise you it is not. So that is what it is going to look like. If you notice, same thing as I have been sharing with you, we did nothing with the rows. If you notice, the rows did not change. We broke apart. I'm changing my color again. The columns and if you notice, they got broken up into a six and a two. And if I add six plus two together, I get eight. Very good, let's keep on trucking. Okay, once again, now we're going to do this with you trying your best. So the first thing I want you to do is on your piece of paper, we're just filling in the first equation or the first part of this big distributive property equation. Remember what goes here, the whole array, the entire array goes here. So I'm going to draw a line to remind you of that. The whole entire array goes here. Go ahead and take 10 seconds to write down what equation matches the entire array. Go ahead. Okay, so you should have written down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven groups or seven rows times three columns or three in each. Very good. Now that is done. If you notice the columns, that three, I'm not doing anything to those columns. My line is not going up and down. So you can go ahead and fill in your three in the next part of the equation. It is not changing because I'm not breaking apart my columns. So boys and girls, I'm gonna give you some time here to make an equation on your paper next to your seven times three. So you're gonna go ahead and put an equal sign. You're gonna make a parentheses, a line, times a line of parentheses, and then be careful, you're now adding a plus sign because you're combining a parentheses, a line, a multiplication sign, a line, and you close it with a parentheses. Go ahead and do that for me right now. Okay, so we didn't break up those columns, but they broke up that seven. They broke up the seven. The seven has been distributed. 
So now we have a one, two, three, four, five. And down here we have two. So you're just gonna put that information down here. Five, two, and if you wanna check, five plus two equals seven. So we had it right. But now you wanna check again to make sure this equation makes sense. Seven times three is 21. So remember, like I showed you in a previous video, that is our peanut butter that has to hold our bread together. So whatever's on this side has to be on this side. Five times three is 15. Two times three is six. If I add 15 plus six, it equals 21. So my equation is balanced. It is correct. Excellent job, boys and girls. Let's keep on moving. Okay, so for this one, it has missing factors. I have already labeled the first part of the equation for you, five times four, which matches five times four. And if you notice, the, the rows did not get broken apart. We know that because there's no line going from left to right. So that five stayed the same. However, and let me change colors here, the four, the columns did get broken apart. See if you can figure out what number or factor goes here. What factor goes here? Go ahead and write them on your paper. You have to use the array to help you. Give you 10 seconds. So you should have said one because of one column goes here. And you should have said three for these three columns goes here. And boys and girls, you all know one plus three equals four. So we were correct. Now let's check our multiplication. Five times four is 20. Five times one, because we know our rule with multiplying one is five. Five times three is 15. If I add five and 15 up, I get 20. So we were correct. Excellent job again, boys and girls. Okay, so now that you are done watching the video that I created about the distributive property, your job is to go on to Seesaw and you are going to look for this lesson, color-coded distributive property activity. You are doing exactly what I just modeled for you, but I really tried to support you with this by making it color-coded. There are two pages. The first page, I am giving you an example I am modeling for you. So boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it will help you with the distributive property. Have fun.